this award which came my way is uh, for a documentary on arsenic problem and uh, we all know that uh, in water quality index india is uh, you know um, in last two three countries and in 2022 uh, water quality index if i remember it correctly india was at 120th place out of 122 countries so hum niche se dusre teesre number pe the to pani hamare yahan bahut kharab hai even if you look uh, live in a area where there is no arsenic in ground in, in ground water you are not safe why because the arsenic problem itni bad gayi hai it has come in the food chain तो जो खाना हम उगाते हैं कृषि करते हैं एग्रीकल्चर करते हैं तो सारे एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्ट्स में आर्सेनिक के बहुत हाई लेवल रिकॉर्ड किए जा रहे हैं अब वो अगर आप दिल्ली में रहते हैं या बेंगलोर में रहते हैं अगर भागलपुर जो इलाका आर्सेनिक से प्रभावित है वहां से आपका चावल आ रहा है या वहां से अनाज आ रहा है तो आपकी बॉडी में जा रहा है तो आपके भीतर भी आर्सेनिक के हिस्सा जा रहा है लुकिंग एट अरावलीज एंड ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई यू नो this uh, ecology is so crucial for uh, the for, for for us as people and you know this is something that is predates a lot of politics a lot of even history this is something that is the natural world around us and um, once that goes away then it opens up sort i think opportunities for a lot of commercial and political interests to enter and then uh, you know ransack forests in a similar way media reports is pe khabre aati thi lekin wo sab naam nahi the jo humko mil rahe the उसमें एक बीजेपी के लीडर थे जो पूर्व में पर्यावरण मंत्री रहे हैं मतलब खुद इन्वायरमेंट मिनिस्टर रहे हैं उनका 11 एकड़ से बड़ा एक फार्म हाउस था अरावली में तो ऐसे हमें कांग्रेस के भी लीडर मिले और लीडर्स मिले तो हमें हैरानी होती गई कि जिनको जिनकी जिम्मेदारी है अरावली को बचाने की पोलिटिशियन हो गए या पर्यावरण मंत्री हो गए वो खुद ही वहाँ ज़मीन कब्जा रहे हैं फिर हमने देखा कि एक और ट्रेंड हमें मिला कि गौशाला के नाम पे मंदिर के नाम पे अरावली के बिल्कुल अंदर लोगों ने काफ़ी ज़्यादा ज़मीन कब्जा लिया है कोई इसको हटा भी नहीं सकता फॉर्म हाउसेस गिरा दिए जाते हैं लेकिन उन मंदिर को या गौशाला को नहीं गिराया जाता पोस्ट 2014 एवरीथिंग चेंज लाइक हाउ इलेक्शन पोलिटिकल स्ट्रेटेजीथिंग so in uh, prior to 2014 we had uh, effective campaign against uh, like targeting journalists like barkha and brazit sadef and many more uh, saying that uh, they are all secu- secularist or what were like you know that's a slander they use right for being secular so essentially they made uh, they uh, uh, you know a particular group targeted them and started uh, discrediting their entire work Uh, there is nothing uh, they can't uh, find exactly fault with their reportage uh, with their uh, you know stories but uh, what they essentially uh, tried doing was um, slander them uh, call them names and uh, uh, so you 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 create an atmosphere saying that you know you should never follow these kind of journalists uh, it's and it's all not based on facts so something similar uh, like you know every see once you set, set that kind of precedents like you know others are quick to follow and uh, similar thing is happening in andhra pradesh in andhra pradesh you see uh, whatever strategy the bjp had followed uh, the same thing has uh, the ysrcp YS has followed uh, saying that uh, any any uh, media which is uh, you know speaking facts or uh, not reporting which according to their convenience they are quick to label them as uh, yellow media hello hello welcome to a very special episode of reporters without orders now in every episode we usually discuss the stories of the week but this one is very special because we at uh, the news laundry and the news minute won a bunch of ramnath goenka awards so we thought we'll have a special show where we'll speak to the reporters who won the awards and also talk about their work i'm pooja apasna your host and i'll quickly take you through a first round of introductions where we introduce each of our reporters we'll start with the senior most hridesh joshi who's uh, had a career in journalism spanning many decades his his focus is mostly on environment he's been with many news organizations including ndtv not the adani one the good one the one before that uh, then we have with us basant kumar who's been with news laundry for over 5 years basant reports on, on a bunch of things but he mostly focuses on politics he's done a bunch of very good investigations you can go and check out his work on the news laundry website as well then we have ayush tiwari who was with the news laundry when the story was done uh, he's been with a bunch of other very very good news organizations including morning context he's currently with the scroll 
Thank you for joining us. And from the News Minute, we have Balakrishna Ganeshan, who's done a whole bunch of things. He currently heads our features department, but he also focuses on cast and reports uh, primarily from Telangana and Andhra, the Telugu states. Then we have our young, bright reporter, Azifa Fatima, who, if you speak to anybody, any editor in News Minute will tell you, is known for badgering her uh, editors. You know, we get 20, 30 messages from her every day, but that's because she's so enthusiastic. She uh, covers a whole bunch of things, including courts, environment, health, and also LGBTQI issues. So uh, that was our first round of introductions. Congratulations to all our winners, but also congratulations to you, the viewer who is a supporter of the News Laundry and the News Minute, because it, if it wasn't for your support, these stories wouldn't be possible and these awards wouldn't be possible. So big, big congratulations and thank you to you. If you're not a subscriber, then you still have time. You can become one today. You can scan the QR code. You can click on the this, uh, link in the description and you can also support independent journalism. Uh, Basant, for our Hindi darshakon, do you have any questions? Yes. The news laundry report was my and Ayush was called NL Sena. And NL Sena, we tell the idea that we tell the idea that the subscriber or the supporter is जो न्यूज लॉन्डर को पसंद करते हैं वो उसमें कंट्रीब्यूट करते हैं तो एक बार फिर इलेक्शन आ रहा है हर बार हम चुनाव में जाते हैं और इस बार थोड़ा अलग होगा क्योंकि द न्यूज मिनट की टीम भी है और न्यूज लॉन्ड्री की टीम भी है तो हमारा सेना प्रोजेक्ट चल रहा है आप उसको सहयोग दें ताकि तमाम रिपोर्ट्स जो अब तक आप पढ़ रहे हैं वैसी रिपोर्ट्स आप तक पहुँचती रहे सपोर्ट करने के लिए न्यूज लॉन्ड्री डॉट कॉम स्लैश सेना पर जाएँ so like like basan said make sure that you do your bit to support our work and we promise from our side that we will continue doing excellent work and we'll only report to you we don't have any corporate sponsors we don't report to any government uh, so let's get on to it let's uh, look at the stories that won the awards we'll start with uh, today's uh, story sir aap hame bataiye aapka story kya tha aur aapne ye mudda kyu chuna pehle First of all, uh, Pooja, I want to say that you have in introduced me as one of our most senior reporter, but I would say other people, including you, who are present here, they are far more promising and bright than me. Because when I started in 1998, we did not have that. I'm, I'm, I'm honest, not being humble when I say this. We did not have that kind of, you know, urgency. And this may be because of the, you know, uh, uh, because of the boom of the, so many different mediums of uh, communication and also the awareness among youth. But these young, uh, uh, relatively young uh, colleagues, when I see them be uh, in your newsroom, uh, Balakrishna or Ms. Fatima or here uh, Ayush, who has done wonderful stories even during these um, uh, electoral bond series, and uh, Basant, who has been always, as we say, Gobar Patti ke patrakar hum log hain, Cow Belt ke patrakar, jaha hum we uh, play with dust and uh, sun every day. So uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I'm really uh, privileged to be with you today. Uh, this story of uh, this this award, which came my way, is uh, for a documentary on arsenic problem. And uh, we all know that uh, in water quality index, India is uh, you know um, in last two three countries. And in 2022 uh, water quality index, if I remember it correctly, India was at 120th place out of 122 countries. So I'm niche se dusre tisre number pe the. तो पानी हमारे यहाँ बहुत खराब है बट आर्सेनिक प्रॉब्लम इफ यू एनी वन स्टडीज इट इज नॉट दैट फर्स्ट टाइम इट हैपन बट आई कैन से विद सम सेंस ऑफ प्राउड दैट दिस वाज ए डॉक्यूमेंट्री व्हिच वेंट ऑन न्यूज लॉन्ड्री विद हेल्प ऑफ ठाकुर फाउंडेशन ग्रांट वी कवर्ड मेनी स्टेट्स एंड इट कवर्ड द प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम ए टू जेड ऑल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम वे कवर्ड वी हंड्रेड ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स वी डिग फ्रॉम द पार्लियामेंट्री वेबसाइट्स Uh, parliamentary questions and uh, uh, we put scores of rtis i must thank my research uh, colleague uh, 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 suchak patel for this he we worked for four five months so this uh, i i briefly tell my uh, our viewers that uh, this was possible because we went uh, scores of villages in four five uh, states and today in india out of 715 districts 150 districts government acknowledges in parliament they are affected with this problem 250 million people are uh, you know facing the threat of this problem if we do not control this problem this this comes uh, from the ground water in ground water uh, we find arsenic and wo arsenic jo hai logo ko cripple kar deta hai unki body ko khatam kar deta hai 
और अगर हम इस समस्या पर जिस समस्या से अभी 25 करोड़ लोग 250 मिलियन पीपल आर अफेक्टेड इफ वी डू नॉट कर्ब इट आफ्टर 50 25 30 और 20 इयर्स 15 इयर्स आवर यंग किड्स इन विलेजेस इफ यू गो विलेजेस आफ्टर विलेज थाउजेंड्स ऑफ विलेजेस आर फेसिंग द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ लीवर किडनी कैंसर लंग कैंसर ऑल का इंटेस्टाइन कैंसर दीज थिंग्स तो पूरा का पूरा ह्यूमन रिसोर्स क्रिपल हो जाएगा तो ये एक बहुत बड़ी समस्या है जिसपे कई सालों से काम चल रहा है ये प्रॉब्लम ग्राउंड वाटर की वजह से होती है इसके मिट्टीगेशन के भी बहुत सारे उपाय किए गए बहुत कामयाब नहीं है लेकिन लास्ट में आखिर में मैं कहूंगा बाकी को लीक्स फिर बोलेंगे फिर हम आगे इस पर बात कर सकते हैं प्रॉब्लम इसमें बड़ी ये हो गई है कि अब अगर आप उस इलाके में रहते हैं इवन इफ यू लुक लिव इन एरिया वेर देर इज नो आर्सैनिक इन ग्राउंड इन ग्राउंड वाटर यू आर नॉट सेफ वाई बिकॉज द आर्सैनिक प्रॉब्लम इतनी बढ़ गई है इट हैज कम इन द फूड चेन तो जो खाना हम उगाते हैं कृषि करते हैं एग्रीकल्चर करते हैं तो सारे एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्ट्स में आर्सेनिक के बहुत हाई लेवल रिकॉर्ड किए जा रहे हैं अब वो अगर आप दिल्ली में रहते हैं या बेंगलोर में रहते हैं अगर भागलपुर जो इलाका आर्सेनिक से प्रभावित है वहां से आपका चावल आ रहा है या वहां से अनाज आ रहा है तो आपकी बॉडी में जा रहा है तो आपके भीतर भी आर्सैनिक के हिस्सा जा रहा है सो दिस इज दैट्स वाई दिस स्टोरी वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी सेटिस्फेक्ट्री वर्क एंड दैट्स इट we we'll talk more about about you you know how you went about the process of reporting in just a bit uh, but I'll also go to Bala now Bala and Azifa and Trajwell's work uh, one in the civic reporting category Bala uh, this was a five part series that uh, you guys did tell us why you chose the topic of manual scavenging because this is as old as time in India why is this such a relevant topic even today why did you choose this topic and how did you go about reporting it my primarily yes as i said like you know people have uh, often reported around it because it's such a you know important subject that you know it is uh, actually uh, you know terrible that you know we still have to report on this but anyway uh, my primarily uh, objective uh, to look at uh, this kind of uh, you know manual scavenging primarily was about how the government you know started uh, you know viewing manual scavenging as a practice uh the policies had come uh, which uh, essentially said that you know there is no manual scavenging deaths at all like in rajya sabha in uh, in the parliament the government essentially said because because they tweaked the definition of what constitutes a, a manual scavenging so uh, in that essence they had uh, like whatever previously uh, would have been uh, actually a, a death caused by you know through an act of uh, manual scavenging now the government is saying that uh, like probably to improve its credentials as a government which has uh, put an end to this hum- inhuman practice they have tweaked the definition so uh, my interest was to understand uh, this particular phenomena of like you know, how the government is trying to hide this and uh, apart from that i wanted to look at see we often talk about like okay the, this many deaths have happened and like you know what kind of compensation have been provided but what kind of uh, you know so the, uh, you have the ministry of social the, the, uh, you know the, the social welfare they are supposed to rehabilitate they have to actively identify the uh, you know communities which have been uh, part of you know who have been uh, traditionally uh, uh, you know included uh, like you know t- treated as manual scavengers who have been engaged in that that kind of uh, profession so they are like the grant is also like you know they, uh, like uh, in each budget the the grant is also uh, lessening i mean like you know decreasing so i wanted to look at this particular part of like you know how the government is essentially trying to uh, say that there's no manual scavenging that and like uh, parallelly like by saying that they're also reducing the grant so uh, which could uplift these communities so that's where my interest started yeah yeah a bit of an ostrich syndrome just you know bury your hand in the uh, head in the sand and pretend like the uh, uh, you know issue doesn't exist and hoping that it'll go away it's an absolute shame that instead of actually addressing the issue government is now fudging data uh, azifa you also worked on the story you went on the ground tell me how difficult it was to report on such a heart wrenching story from the ground uh one of the main things that you know uh, we saw on the ground is that how uh, people are not aware that what they are doing is in in fact manual scavenging at least in kerala so kerala has this uh, history of you know banning uh, manual scavenging long before the pan india ban and uh, i guess in 1982 if i'm not wrong uh, they banned in kerala and all so now the form has changed and uh, when i went to kori code from where the story was reported we found that people don't consider it as manual scavenging they consider it as tank cleaning 
which essentially refers to septic tank. So when you go and when you watch these people cleaning the tank, we we actually know that it is manual scavenging. And even when we try telling them, asking them like, what are you doing? Like, do you know that this is banned or do you know you have, uh, you know, you should be provided rehabilitation. They are like completely oblivious to that. And many of them, uh, they travel abroad, they come back and they're forced to do this work again because of the history. Like they are not given any other jobs. And this was like primarily one of the challenges to actually try to understand how to go about the story when they are claiming that it's not manual scavenging. We need government protection. We need insurance and everything for a banned practice. So this was like one of the main issues that we faced. Yeah, uh, a very, very uh, complicated layered issue that we see in every nook and corner. You can check out uh, their work, uh, their five part series on the News Minute website. I will now, uh, you know, we'll come back and chat more about, uh, you know, what kind of things you found out. But let's uh, look at the story that Ayush and Basant covered. Basant, first of all, if you can tell us, this story is very cute. The story of the land grabbing in Arawali, how did you do your reporting about this story? अरावली में जैसे तमाम जो पहले रिपोर्ट्स पे बात हुई उस पर काम होता रहा है तो अरावली में भी काम होता रहता था सुप्रीम कोर्ट का एक ऑर्डर आया था उसके बाद हमारी नज़र पड़ी कि हमें अरावली पे कुछ करना चाहिए क्योंकि सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने एक ऑर्डर दिया था कि इन घरों को गिराया जाए इन फार्म हाउस को खाली किया जाए और ये ऑर्डर लगातार आते रहता है ऐसा नहीं है कोई जो पर्यावरणविद होते हैं वो जाते हैं कोर्ट उसके बाद सुप्रीम कोर्ट का ऑर्डर आता है टूट जाता है फिर बन जाता है फिर हमने मैंने और आयुष ने उस पर काम करना शुरू किया हम अरावली में गए हम डॉक्यूमेंट्स निकाले और फिर उसके जरिए तलाशने की शुरू तलाशने की कोशिश की कि कौन लोग हैं जो ये कर रहे हैं और जब हमने उस डॉक्यूमेंट्स को पढ़ा तो मीडिया रिपोर्ट्स इस पर खबरें आती थी लेकिन वो सब नाम नहीं थे जो हमको मिल रहे थे उसमें एक बीजेपी के लीडर थे जो पूर्व में पर्यावरण मंत्री रहे मतलब खुद इन्वायरमेंट मिनिस्टर रहे हैं उनका 11 एकड़ था ना 11 एकड़ से बड़ा एक फार्म हाउस था अरावली में तो ऐसे हमें कांग्रेस के भी लीडर मिले और लीडर्स मिले तो हमें हैरानी होती गई कि जिनको जिनकी जिम्मेदारी है अरावली को बचाने की पॉलिटिशियन हो गए या पर्यावरण मंत्री हो गए वो खुद ही वहाँ ज़मीन कब्जा रहे हैं फिर हमने देखा कि जब हम स्टोरी पर काम करने लगे तो हमने देखा कि एक और ट्रेंड हमें मिला कि गौशाला के नाम पर मंदिर के नाम पे अरावली के बिल्कुल अंदर लोगों ने काफ़ी ज़्यादा ज़मीन कब्जा लिया है कोई इसको हटा भी नहीं सकता फॉर्म हाउसेस गिरा दिए जाते हैं लेकिन उन मंदिर को या गौशाला को नहीं गिराया जाता जब हमने इस पे काम किया जब ये चीज़ें मिलने लगी तो फिर हमने इसको रिपोर्ट किया और क्यों किया क्योंकि इन्वामेंट तो सबसे बड़ा मसला ही हमारे दौर में और अरावली नहीं होने पर अरावली को जिस तरीके से ख़त्म करने की कोशिश की जा रही है तो दिल्ली को काफ़ी नुकसान हो सकता है उत्तर भारत को तो इसलिए हमने सोचा कि ये इस पे काम करना चाहिए और डिटेल में करना चाहिए एक और छोटा सवाल आपसे आपको क्या लगता है आपने अभी बताया कि दूसरे न्यूज चैनल्स न्यूज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने भी रिपोर्ट किया था इस बारे में पर नाम आ, 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 रिपोर्ट नहीं किया था तो जान बूझ के उन्होंने इन लोगों का जो नेता थे उनका नाम छुपाया उन्होंने कि आपको लगता है कि उनको वहाँ तक वहाँ तक गए भी नहीं लोग नहीं नहीं अगर वो कोशिश करते हम लोगों ने भी कोशिश की हम दिल्ली में बैठे हैं फरीदाबाद और गुड़गांव के अरावली में जाके ढूंढते थे तो अगर हमें मिल गया तो वो जो स्थानीय रिपोर्टर हैं जो जो गुड़गांव में या फरीदाबाद में ही रिपोर्टिंग करते हैं उनको तो ज़्यादा पता होगा हमारी तुलना में तो वो पावरफुल लोग हैं वो जिस पॉलिटिशियन के हम जिक्र करें वो फरीदाबाद के ही हैं वो कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर मिनिस्टर हैं बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट में खट्टर गवर्नमेंट में पिछले से पिछले बार मतलब जब खट्टर गवर्नमेंट आई थी हरियाणा में कांग्रेस के लीडर हैं जो कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर हैं वो फरीदाबाद से ही विधायक थे तो नाम तो पता ही होगा लेकिन वही कि वो पावरफुल लोग हैं बाकी लोगों का नाम आ जाता था लेकिन उनका नाम नहीं आता था एक बहुत बड़ी यूनिवर्सिटी है वहाँ पे उसका भी नाम बेहद कम आता था जबकि उन पर सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बताया था कि इस यूनिवर्सिटी का जो स्कूल है वो अरावली के ज़मीन पर बना हुआ है एम स्कूल है तो नाम तो पता ही होगा लेकिन वही कि प्रभाव और अखबारों का जो विज्ञापन मॉडल है जिस जो हमारा मॉडल नहीं है तो वो भी एक वजह है कि वहाँ से विज्ञापन भी आते हैं सरकार भी वहाँ पे बीजेपी की है कांग्रेस के एक भी नेता थे तो कांग्रेस की भी रही होगी इसलिए शायद अखबार वाले नहीं लिख पाते या दैट्स मोर ऑफ रीजन वाई यू नीड टू सपोर्ट इंडिपेंडेंट न्यूज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन परफेक्ट टाइम टू प्लग इन आर पिच इज आयुष टेलास यू नो फॉर पीपल लाइक मी सिटिंग इन बैंगलोर एंड यू नो बारा सिटिंग इन हाइड्राबाद 
tell us why this is so important, right? Why is the fact that uh, there is encroachment happening in Aravalli so crucial for the very, very delicate ecosystem of the Northern Plains? So if you look at the map of India, especially uh, North India, you would see that a part of it is green, what uh, Hidesh Ji said in the Gobar Patti, the cow belt. And a part of it is a little yellow, which is what we, uh, you know, the Rajasthan uh, sort of area. And the reason why that yellow has not taken over the entire North Indian landscape and had, has, the, the green has not disappeared is because of the Aravalis. It's because the Aravalis protect that desertification to go from the west to the east. And... Um, when we were trying to do this story, uh, you know, the Haryana government was trying to amend the laws that protect those mountains. And it was egregious because that amendment said that those mountains are probably not even be recognized as forests. So, you know, what is obviously when you go there of, is a forest would not be in law a forest and the Supreme Court had to put a stay. Uh, and if a state government... Haryana is a gov- uh, you know state where the forest cover is one of the lowest in the country. If a state like that, where the green cover is already shedding and it uh, stands to lose a lot from desertification, if the government can amend the law uh, so egregiously, then it sets a precedent and that precedent can then become a normal throughout the entire country. So if in this in you know in the southern india you have the nilgiris or you have the western ghats and so it it would be a matter of time before the first domino falls so looking at aravallis and trying to understand why um uh, you know this uh, ecology is so crucial for uh, the for, for for us as people and you know this is something that is predates a lot of politics a lot of even history this is something that is the natural world around us and um, once that goes away, then it opens up, sort I think, opportunities for a lot of commercial and political interests to enter and then, uh, you know, ransack forests in a similar way. Right, right. Uh, there was another story from the News Minute uh, that one in the politics uh, category, Prajwal Bhatt, could not be here with us, but he won two goingas, by the way. Uh, he was also part of the team with uh, Azifa and Bala, and he also won for his coverage of the Udupi uh, hijab issue. I'm sure all of you remember 2022. There in Karnataka, there was there were mass uh, protests across the state in universities and colleges. Uh, one section of students led by the ABVP were protesting against uh, a smaller section of young women who wanted to wear hijab inside classrooms. So Prajwal was one of the first reporters to be on the ground. He was on ground zero. In fact, that very college where the issue started, Prajwal almost got arrested because he was trying to speak uh, to the students and the college uh, wanted to book him for trespassing. But he did not let go of the issue. He kept at it uh, during the protest. He went beyond uh, the noise, you know, kind of pieced together how they were all being organized by a small section. It's not as if the entire college was in on it. You can go and check out his work, both text stories as well as video stories that he's done on the News Minute website. Okay, things have gotten a little uh, serious. I know that we're speaking about uh, very, very important stories, but uh, let's kind of try and get a sense of all of you what it was like, you know, when you were getting that award. What was the speech like uh, by Nitin Gatkar? Who wants to go first? Basan, what did you think about ji ka jo bashan tha, aapne suna relevant laga aapko? बातें तो अच्छी की थी पर वो प्रैक्टिकल नहीं होता है इमरजेंसी <laughs> के दौर को याद किया मीडिया को लेकर फिर उन्होंने भी कहा कि विचारधारा में हमें नहीं बटना चाहिए हमें देश को लेकर या ऐसे पर वही है कि प्रैक्टिकल नहीं दिखता प्रैक्टिकल में आप देखिए भारत में मीडिया का जो आ, मीडिया की जो स्थिति है कितनी नीचे जा रहे हैं लगातार सरकार अनुराग ठाकुर केंद्रीय मंत्री वो बार बार पार्लियामेंट में भी कहते हैं कि जो ये डेटा आता है हम उसको नहीं मानते हैं लेकिन नहीं मानने से सच्चाई तो नहीं छुपती है ना किस तरीके से मीडिया आजकल काम कर रहा है लास्ट वीक जो आप हम सब इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड पे खबर कर रहे हैं जिस दिन ये डेटा आया उस दिन एक भारत का सबसे बड़ा अखबार है सबसे ज़्यादा पढ़े जाने वाला अखबार फ्रंट पेज पे कोने में खबर थी तो मीडिया को किस तरीके से खबरों को दबाया जा रहा है खबरों को डाइवर्ट कर दिया जा रहा है तो वो बातें अच्छी की उन्होंने पर बात सबसे अच्छी बात जो इंडियन एक्सप्रेस के एडिटर हैं उन्होंने की और वो पहली बार नहीं हर बार और हम सबको इंतजार था कि वो आज क्या बोलेंगे और जब बोले तो मजा आ गया सुन के एब्सोल्युटली आई वाज कमिंग टू दैट नेक्स्ट देशी आपको क्या लगा यू नो द स्पीच दैट ही गिव्स एवरी ईयर इज नो पैक्ड विद पंचेस वो चिल्लाते नहीं है दूसरे जो एडिटर्स रहते जो 
हर रोज आके चिल्लाते टीवी चैनल्स पे पर उनका जो बात करने का जो तरीका रहता है लाइक like, एक हफ्ते तक हम बस सोचते रह जाते कि इतना अच्छे से उन्होंने जो बोला इतना इम्पैक्टफुली बात किया उन्होंने आपको क्या लगा इस बात का जो स्पीच था उस बारे में क्या क्या ओपिनियन है आपका मैं भी मैं ये मानता हूँ कि राजकमल झा ने बहुत जो एक संपादक की गरिमा है उसके हिसाब से बहुत अच्छी उनकी स्पीच थी लेकिन उससे पहले मैं गडकरी साहब की स्पीच के बारे में एक बात कहना चाहता हूँ उन्होंने जो कहा और जिस राज्य से मैं आता हूँ उत्तराखंड से वो उत्तराखंड कोई भी जाके देखे या हिमाचल कोई भी जाके देखे हमने पूरी सीरीज न्यूज लॉन्ड्री पे की थी तो हम कहते हैं ना कि द प्रूफ ऑफ द पुडिंग इज इन द ईटिंग कि अभी आपने कितना अच्छा केक बनाया है वो उसका मजा तब है जब वो खाने में भी वैसा लगे खाली बातों से न लगे अच्छा तो आ, सारे नॉर्म्स जो है उत्तराखंड में तोड़े गए हैं सड़क बनाने से लेकर बहुत सारे कामों तक के लिए और उसमें गडकरी साहब का मंत्रालय भी आ, बहुत सारे कार्य उनके अंतर्गत आते हैं इसी तरह से हिमाचल में भी बहुत सारे आ, काम ऐसे हो रहे हैं जिसमें आ, उनका मंत्रालय भी है और दूसरे मंत्रालय भी है तो जाने या अनजाने में जो भी हो रहा है सरकार इस जिम्मेदारी को जब भी उनके सामने लाया जाता है जैसे अभी छोटी सी बात मैं और कहूंगा जो अरावली को मैंने कई सालों तक कवर किया अरावली की इस इम्पोर्टेंस को सरकार कभी मानने को तैयार नहीं होती वो वो एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्स को मानने को तैयार नहीं होती कि भारत का सबसे ज्यादा है तो वो कैसे इस बात को मानेगी अरावली जो गुजरात से शुरू होती है और दिल्ली में रायसेना हिल तक फैली हुई है ये अरावली की जो जियोलॉजी है जो पहाड़ी है वो सिर्फ एक पहाड़ी नहीं है वो एक पूरी इकोलॉजी है कई प्राणियों का घर है और वो थार रेगिस्तान से जो अंधर तूफान आते हैं जो आने वाले वक्त में और ज्यादा होंगे एक्सट्रीम वेदर के कारण उनके लिए एक दीवार की तरह काम करती तो हम हमेशा इन्वायरमेंट को एक एक इम्पेडिमेंट मानते हैं डेवलपमेंट के लिए वी वी थिंक दैट इट 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 मिलिटेट्स अगेंस्ट द डेवलपमेंट बट इट डजन एक्चुअली इट इज एन एस तो इस बात को कई बार जैसे मैं कोई उनका बयान याद आता है गडकरी साहब का जब उन्होंने हम हिमाचल में थे तो उनका एक बयान था जो हमने यूज भी किया अपनी स्टोरी में वो कहते थे मेरे को इस नदी को खोदने दो और मैं दोनों और इतनी तगड़ी दीवार बनाऊंगा कि नदी कहीं जाएगी नहीं और नदी का नाम ब्यास है कोई भी आदमी जिसने ब्यास रिवर को देखा होगा वो अपने सपने में भी ये बात नहीं कह सकता है किसी छोटी छोटी जलधाराएं भी जो है उनको आप बांध नहीं सकते हो ये नेचर का नियम है वो अपना रास्ता बना बना लेती है आप उनके चारों को और ये अगर आप जाएंगे मैं बहुत लंबी बात हो जाएगी अगर आप हिस्ट्री पढ़ेंगे बिहार में जो बांध बनाने का जो तरीका था अंग्रेजों ने कभी इसको स्वीकार नहीं किया क्योंकि उन्हें पता था बांध से मेरा मतलब है कि रोकना ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन खड़े करना पानी के रास्ते उन्होंने कहा कि नहीं ये काम नहीं आएगा कर बाद में भले और लोगों ने किया तो एनी सेंसिबल पर्सन हु अंडरस्टैंड्स द इंजीनियरिंग अंडरस्टैंड्स द इकोलॉजी विल नेवर डू वट द गवर्नमेंट हैज बिन डूइंग कमिंग बैक टू राजकमल झा यस गुड दैट इतने प्रेशर के बावजूद इतनी समस्याओं के बावजूद अगर संपादक कुछ ऐसी बातें करते हैं तो उससे हौसला बढ़ता है और उससे दूसरे लोगों को भी सीखने को मिलता है और अच्छी बात है कि उन्होंने उन लोगों के आगे कहा कही ये बात जो लोग वास्तव में वो मालिक की जब उन्होंने बात कही कि कुछ मालिक इतने ज्यादा कॉम्फर्टेबल है इस पॉस्चर में कि जब वो खड़े होते हैं तो शायद उन्हें तकलीफ होती है तो ऐसे कुछ मालिक वहां बैठे हुए भी थे इट इज इट वॉज गुड टू हेयर एंड इट वॉज समथिंग वेरी वेरी आई मीन एक्सिलेटिंग absolutely bala tell us how difficult it is uh, to to report from uh, you know the two states that you mostly report from that is telangana and andhra because you know there's a lot of talk about freedom of uh, uh, press in in the northern parts but telugu states too are not great uh, you know the politicians are not great when it comes to interacting with the media right w- w- what do you think how difficult is it yeah unfortunately uh, post 2014 the uh, i mean i mean that's how i can put it because post 2014 uh, everything changed like how uh, elections are fought how uh, political strategies are formed everything so in uh, prior to 2014 we had uh, effective campaign against uh, like targeting journalists like barkha and brazip sadef and many more uh, saying that uh, they're all uh, secu- secularist or whatever like you know that's a slander they use right for being secular so essentially they made uh, they uh, uh, you know a particular group targeted them and started uh, discrediting their entire work uh, there is nothing uh, they can't uh, find exactly fault with their reportage uh, with their uh, you know stories but uh, what they essentially uh, tried doing was um, slander them uh, call them names and uh, 
so you 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 create an atmosphere saying that you know you should never follow these kind of journalists uh, it's and it's all not based on facts so something similar uh, like you know every see once you set set that kind of precedence like you know others are quick to follow and uh, similar thing is happening in andhra pradesh in andhra pradesh you see uh, whatever strategy the bjp had followed uh, the same thing has uh, the ysrcp YS has followed uh, saying that uh, any any uh, media which is uh, you know speaking facts or uh, not reporting which according to their convenience they are quick to label them as uh, yellow media saying that and we are a part of a you know group of, of, uh, belonging to the opposition so yellow I mean, media for those who are not familiar uh, uh, yellow is the tdp color so when they say yellow yeah, media there is a pun also there yeah yeah, yeah besides yeah, yeah and you can see uh, you know the the language it is everything has uh, it uh, actually it is quite scary in andhra pradesh the kind of uh, uh, daily harassment i mean daily uh, daily uh, you know it's cyber bullying happens uh, because you you have a contrarian view it's quite uh, recently uh, uh, a woman who's actually a ysrcp supporter and uh, i'm not just blaming ysrcp every other party has uh, now uh, understood how this entire thing works so everyone is using internet as a means to propagate and that propagation includes a lot of uh, fabrication lies outright lies and uh, targeted harassment so this is a kind of uh, environment uh, you know we are uh, like even journalists it's uh, it's quite common for like journalists to be targeted uh, particularly women journalists because it is easy to uh, you know defame a women journalist by making you know all kinds of insinuations right uh, one journalist women journalist who was actually it was part of a job that you know she uh, gets to know the uh, mp well it was part of a program but uh, her proximity to the uh, uh, leader in question uh, became a subject of ridicule you know making all kinds of uh, vile uh, propaganda against her eventually like you know the government had to intervene and uh, a case had to be filed so this kind of uh, you know it's it's quite it's quite a disheartening thing yeah yeah it gets uh, more and more challenging uh, for journalists particularly like you said women journalists because you know the attacks come from all sides uh, but i want to actually try and see if we can find a silver lining as if you are a young journalist a uh, young woman journalist what does an award like this mean to you uh, you know how does it kind of uh, renew your hope in journalism perhaps yeah it's kind of uh, you know being young and uh, most of my reportings are from rural areas if you might have seen so it's kind of like people don't take you so seriously when you do these reportings they're like what do you know or how will you report on this kind of talk so at the end of the day you can't get angry or you can't shout at them i'm just like okay let's do the story let's see it but when uh, such a piece comes up and there is like recognition for it and uh, it means that okay fine uh, you know you don't have to necessarily prove to anyone that you can do your job but at the end of the day you do the story then what follows will follow so that is a kind of thing that kept going on in my mind and still like when when you go to the ground when i go to the ground uh, especially for political stories or crime stories especially people don't take i feel that people don't take me seriously or they feel that i'm i get too scared on seeing these people or whatever it's a big thing like when i ask a question or something uh, this recently we i went to a story uh, on puducherry and the police continuously made it a point to look at the camera person and talk and he was not even holding a camera he was just standing near me instead of talking to me so these are the things that happen almost everywhere but still you know i can't do anything about it yeah yeah it's something we've all faced and uh, it doesn't get easier no matter how many years you put on the field uh, there are still some men who think that just by the virtue of you being a woman you don't know what you're talking about yeah. <laughs> right it's something we all face basant aapko bhi aisa aapne dekha hai aap jab reporting karne jaate hai to aapko dekh ke assume kar lete ki aap young ho aapko pata nahi hoga to 
आपको ऐसे हम जो मैं प्लेनिंग बोलते हैं आपको भी ऐसे समझाया जाता है नहीं नहीं ऐसे सवाल नहीं पूछा जाता है ऐसे बोलना चाहिए आपने भी देखा है ये सब शुरुआती दौर में तो थोड़ा बहुत होता ही है कि आप कॉलेज से निकल के आए हैं और तब थोड़ा हम अग्रेसिव भी होते हैं सवाल पूछने में वो एक अब थोड़ा अनुभव के साथ हमारे सवाल पूछने में भी बदलाव आता है तो जब कॉलेज से आए थे तब अग्रेसिव होकर सवाल पूछते थे लगता था देश बदलना है तब थोड़ा बहुत हुआ लेकिन अब नहीं होता अब तो हम खुद ही इतने अच्छे से पूछते हैं कि सामने वाला ना चाहते हुए भी जवाब देगा और वो जो जवाब जो सच है वही बोलेगा अगर वो बोलना चाहता है तो आयुष आई वॉन्ट जस्ट टेक वन कॉमेंट फ्रॉम यू ऑन योर स्टोरी विच वॉज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स राइट गोइंग थ्रू कोरिंग ओवर लॉट्स ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स एंड देन कनेक्टिंग इट टू रियल लाइफ फेसिस पीपल राइट हाउ डिफिकल्ट वॉज सिट टू वन ट्रैक दैट एंटायर थिंग एंड देन मेक द कनेक्शन uh frankly not very difficult because um when the part of the ravelis that we focused on uh falls uh not very far from where we are based so we live in delhi and the ravelis end in you know the ridge area which is 20 kilometers so we were not traveling very great distances while we were going to the ground and also credits to the bureaucrat the forest official who made those documents uh despite the, the sort of legalese of uh, laws you know it was written very plain tabular form with good information packed into uh you know uh, different tables and slots so the in a way uh, i remember we actually even even met the forest official who was responsible for a lot of conservation efforts that was still going on in the aravlis which only goes to show that despite the government or commercial interest there are always people even within the system who work to be on the good side of things and uh, when we went on the ground you know the challenges were the simple challenges of reporting as a profession you know you have to show up in a village where you've never been and people you've never met and a climate and a sort of culture you don't know about and in a matter of hours or in a matter of days you have to find out sort of a lot of things about these people and then sort of have a coherent narrative so uh, i think the we could read the documents but going and being in places again and again day after day um speaking to people and trying to understand a certain things and of course when one of the stories which involved this mountain of garbage uh, which has caused the cases of cancer in a nearby village to go up again you know there was a lot of uh, jargon around how waste is managed and how waste is transported which we had to go through but uh, you know you just have to stick with it and uh, not give up and thankfully basant is someone who's always uh, good to count on in these situations because i'm the always the impatient one and uh, he but he, he has been a journalist longer than me and he's more experienced and he's the one who's uh, usually uh, the wiser one between two of us so all in all luckily uh, it what seemed daunting was not as daunting when we got it done yeah good team work but what was it like when you did get pass kehna chahta tha aapse yahan par bahut important baat hai ki aravli हालांकि मेरी स्टोरी आर्सेनिक पर थी पर मुझे अरावलियों बोलने में ज्यादा मजा आ रहा है इस वक्त वो ये कि यू नो चाहे जर्नलिज्म हो चाहे अरावली हो देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ होप और मैं तो इसलिए कह रहा हूँ क्योंकि मैंने शुरुआत में भी जैसा कहा आई वांट टू रिपीट दैट द यंग जर्नलिस्ट आई वर्क विद दे आर मोर प्रोमिसिंग एंड शार्पर एंड दे आर मोर एंटरप्राइजिंग अरावली में बहुत कुछ बर्बाद हुआ है पर अरावली ने एक उम्मीद भी दी है अगर आप मैं जो दिल्ली आना चाहते हैं अगर आप लोग भी घूमने के लिए तो अरावली बायोडाइवर्सिटी पार्क अगर आप जाएंगे मैंने उसमें पूरा एक वीडियो किया है और आज मैं उसे रिकमेंड भी करूंगा दस मिनट का करीब वीडियो है दस मिनट से ज्यादा का वो ये बताता है नेचर की सबसे अच्छी बात ही होती है कि नेचर में अभी हम जैसा आप देख रहे हैं चर्नोबिल जो हुआ था घटना रशा में वहां पर भी अगर आप छोड़ दिया जाए नेचर को तो नेचर के भीतर अपने आप को रेजिमिनेट करने की बहुत ही अमेजिंग पावर होती है और उन्होंने वहां विजय धसमाना एक क्यूरेटर हैं उन्होंने अरावली बायोडाइवर्सिटी पार्क जो काफी बड़ा फैला हुआ है उसमें उन्होंने वो नहीं प्रजातियों को उन्हीं स्पीशीज को लगाया जो स्पीशीज वहां पर हुआ करती थी मिट्टी की जांच करके उस जगह की और आज वो एक घना जंगल बन चुका है इट्स लंग वहां पर जो दे रहा है पूरी पावर उसको तो ये भी एक बहुत उम्मीद की बात है अगर सरकार थोड़ा सा सहयोग करे और लोग पूरी ताकत से खड़े हो जाए तो इन चीजों को बहुत बचाया भी जा सकता है तो ऐसे में ये रिपोर्ट जो इन्होंने की है आयुष ने बसंत ने या दूसरे पत्रकार जो कर रहे हैं वो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट हो जाते हैं बिल्कुल इट ऑल्सो कॉज अटेंशन टू वॉट इज है 
what is going wrong. So Ayush, in that sense, I want to quickly get in also a word from you, what it felt like when you were given the award, you know, the speeches that you heard, your your contemporaries, uh, you know, what was that like for you? It's good. I, I think it makes you feel a little, uh, uh, you know, you, you it, 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 for once a reporter might feel that, okay, all is not lost or uh, people at least read what you say. And when you meet others, they say, oh, I read something you did. And that can be a story you thought no one ever paid attention to. So in terms of uh, getting a little credit uh, for a day in a year, it was a great event. An award, I don't make much of it. It's a nice trophy. My mother loves it, but that is all it is to me. Yeah, someone's excited, at least your mother is. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, uh, you know, since you did say that there are other stories that you've done that uh, you thought should should have won, maybe we can get to that part of the show where uh, you you recommend something else. So what, uh, two two parts here, which other stories that you've done you recommend that our viewers today should go and read or uh, watch? And also, what are you watching these days on OTT? What are you reading? Tell us, uh, leave us with your recommendation. I mean, we've done a story, we've done a series together on Ayodhya uh, from 2021, which was since, I mean, it's two months later, but since the Pran Pratishthan happened and probably more politics might happen on it. Uh, yesterday, Yogi Ji said that Ayodhya mein Diwali aai hai, Mathura mein Holi aayegi. So uh, we did a story uncovering the land deals two years ago, and that sort of started the whole process of journalists looking into how uh, shady the transactions of the Ram Mandir Trust were. So, I mean, that's the story I thought we would win, but did not win. And uh, I'm reading a very interesting book by uh, this man called, he's dead, called William Shearer, called The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. He was an jur- American journalist in Nazi Nazi Germany in the 1930s. And he saw everything not as someone, a historian who would go back to documents and try to find the truth, but he was there when it was happening. And 15 years after the Second World War, he wrote a book about his experiences reporting on Nazi Germany. And I, w- I was struck by the fact that even though he's an amazing journalist, he missed the biggest story of his times. The whole entire book does not mention Holocaust even once. So he had no idea it was happening, which also shows that as good as you can be, you can always miss, miss the big picture. So that's the book I'm reading and it's a, it's a classic now and I would suggest anyone to pick it up. Fantastic. Basant, what do you recommend? What are you reading? What are you watching? What are you watching? What are you watching? I'm now a Hindi journalist, editor of Prabhas Joshi, who is Indian Express ka Hindi version of Jan Satta, who is the founder editor. He wrote articles in the articles in the Jan Satta. Mein. 2000 से 2009 के बीच उसका एक संग्रह आया है राजकमल पब्लिकेशन से वो मैं पढ़ रहा हूं उसका नाम है 21वीं सदी का पहला दशक तो ये उन, उन्होंने लिखा है कई सारे लेख हैं वो अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी की सरकार के दौरान के फिर यूपीए 1 के दौरान के तो वो मैं पढ़ रहा हूं जी हृदयशी आप क्या रेकमेंड करना चाहेंगे वन ऑफ कोर्स इज योर डॉक्यूमेंट्री दैट वी पुट द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन वी वुड अर्ज पीपल टू गो एंड वॉच इट Oh, but uh, uh, tell our viewers what else you think they should read this week or yeah. what. That documentary is a bit bit of grim work. So uh, it, it, it's good if people watch and enrich them about that problem. Uh, but uh, the video I told you, I did it for uh, Shivali, uh, that I will share that how Rauli, a part of Rauli was rejuvenated by a curator by putting the same species which, would, which were uh, growing there many years back. That is one. We will share the link. And one is uh, one is the book of a writer who lives in your city, Bangalore, Dr. Ramchandra Guha. This book, Cooking of Books. And this book, uh, also because I am translating this book in English. One of the passion I have developed, I, I translate the books, which I think uh, Hindi readers should also read. Uh, a little part of tricky tricky part is that Hindi readers also read directly English books. So in Hindi, we <laughs> have so one book I uh, last year translated is Bob Bill Atkins, uh, Lips in Masuri, is Trevlock. Um, that's called Footloose in Himalaya. Uh, that book is translated under the name Atkin Ka Himalaya. But this book will come by the end of the year. This is a wonderful book in a way that how people go around telling everything which they do day by day, minute by minute on Twitter, social media. But here is the editor of this author, Ramchandra Gua, who is so introvert that he doesn't want to convey, uh, communicate with the people. He only talks with them through via emails or 
uh, you know, uh, communication happens like this. So somewhere Mukul Keshwan says that he doesn't like the living people, that editor. He's so introvert that he converses with his, their disembodied emails. He likes Bithovan also because Bithovan is dead. <laughs> 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 so it is a wonderful book I am reading these days. So I think enough re- recommendation. I have lot many, but I think for now these are enough. What do okay. you think, Azifa? Uh, my recommendation for my story that you asked, uh, I would suggest Access Denied, that series where we worked on three stories uh, on health. So that I would recommend that. And regarding the book, I'm reading this wonderful essay collection by Anne Patchett. It's called These Precious Days. She has written a bunch of essays about several things like friendship, family, work, and how writing works, So, which is like the best essay in that book. So yeah, that is a book that I would recommend. Bala, your recommendations for the week? Yeah, so I'm actually watching, uh, I just started uh, watching the uh, first episode of uh, The Three Body Problem yesterday. I, I had to uh, turn it off after a while. It was very intense for me. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I was really hooked. To, I mean, I really w- like watching that. Right? But yeah, book wise, I'm uh, I'm juggling with between two books actually because one is too academic. Uh, it's called uh, Gita Press and the Making of Hindu India. So quite a nice book uh, if you want to understand Hindu nationalism and uh, the formations of various organization like uh, Arya Samaj and the differences within Arya Samaj, the Hindu Mahasabha. If you have to uh, understand the origins of these organizations, if you have to uh, precisely understand uh, how how different are the, uh, you know, each organization, because I think uh, essentially uh, uh, most of them are like, uh, you know, you most, most organizations, uh, if they are, uh, you know, uh, fighting for the Hindutva cause, they are all uh, bracketed under the same, they are viewed in the same lens. But within these groups, there is like a lot of differences and how they overcome the, the, the those differences and all, the, uh, like it's a, it has a good history to it. So if, if someone is really, uh, you know, uh, he really wants to know uh, this, uh, how this Hindu nationalism project began, they can absolutely uh, go for that book. And the other book, uh, which I uh, read, uh, because I find this one a little, uh, you know, too academic. And so I, I'm reading this uh, Seven Moons of Mali by uh, uh, the Sri Lankan writer. So it's quite a nice book about, um, it largely deals with the uh, civil war uh, in Sri Lanka and how he looks at the civil war also is a very uh, interesting choice. So yeah, yeah, it actually won a Booker Prize. So I'm not, I'm sure many have, uh, many are familiar with that book. Right. Uh, from my end, a three-part recommendation, a book that you can read and you should read, in in my opinion, Love Jihad and Other Fictions, written by Srinivasan Jain, William and uh, Sukriya Sharma. I am reading it and it's not a very big book, but it's thoroughly researched and you absolutely should read because uh, if you're like uh, us and you ha- you're spammed with uh, false, uh, you know, WhatsApp messages from family groups and RWA groups, this will help you counter them. Uh, second second recommendation is this series on Netflix. It's an eight-part series called The Gentleman. It's created by uh, Guy Ritchie. It was a quick watch. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good break for me from uh, work. And I would also urge our uh, viewers to go and uh, read a two-part series uh, by uh, Raj Shekhar on Wantara. Uh, you know, the cost of this private zoo that uh, Ambani's uh, youngest kid, I'm sure you all caught that uh, pre-wedding bash, but read this two-part series to understand what the cost of it was on ecology on those animals and also just how laws were tweaked uh, you know in different countries to make this private zoo happen okay so uh let me just quickly also remind our viewers that you know we are coming up with news laundry and news minute uh, we have come up with many verticals different topics uh, for the coverage of Lok Sabha elections you can go check it out and see what interests you we're looking at issues like women and politics we're looking at uh, uh, you know, communalism. So see what, uh, you know, piques your interest. And of course, the most important is the money part of it. We've been trying to track money in elections, in politics. And the first step towards that was a project electoral bond, where we went through the data painstakingly and we've put together a bunch of uh, stories, both videos and text stories. 
मेक श्योर यू कैच दैट एंड यू ऑल्सो बिकम अ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर बसन जी न्यूज लॉन्ड्री और न्यूज मिनट या दूसरे जो मीडिया ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो इंडिपेंडेंट है उनको सहयोग करें क्योंकि अभी हाल ही में इलेक्ट्रल बॉन्ड आया और आप देखिए कि मीडिया से वो खबर गायब ही कर दी गई हमारे साथ आयुष बैठे हुए हैं पूजा बैठी हुई हैं और प्रतीक गोयल हैं या न्यूज़ मिनट स्क्रॉल और न्यूज़ लॉन्ड्री के कई रिपोर्टर्स हैं जो लगातार उस पर काम कर रहे हैं आयुष की अभी कोटक महिंद्रा पे एक रिपोर्ट आई है उसके पहले डी पर आई सुनील भारती पे एक एक रिपोर्ट आई है कि कैसे उन्होंने जब संचार के लिए पूरा रूल बदल रहा था उस वक्त उन्होंने बीजेपी को डोनेस डोनेसन दिया ये हम इसलिए कर पाती हैं तमाम रिपोर्ट्स क्योंकि हमें कोई रोकने वाला नहीं है और हमें कोई किसी भी जर्नलिस्ट को या किसी भी मीडिया ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को तभी रोका जाता है जब वो आप पे डिपेंडेंट हो यानी विज्ञापन अगर उधर से रुक जाए तो संस्थानों का काम नहीं चलेगा इसलिए न्यूज़ लॉन्ड्री या न्यूज़ मिनट हम सब विज्ञापन नहीं लेते हम आपके सहयोग से काम करते हैं तो आप अपना सहयोग बनाए रखें ताकि जिन चीज़ों पर पे पर्दा डाला जा रहा है हम पर्दा हटा दें और इसीलिए जो चुनाव करीब है और न्यूज़ लॉन्ड्री और न्यूज़ मिनट की टीम इस बार सात ग्राउंड पर उतरेगी तो हमारा सेना प्रोजेक्ट चल रहा है आप न्यूज़ लॉन्ड्री डॉट कॉम पर जाएं और जो भी आपको पसंद आए उस सेना में अपना कंट्रीब्यूशन दें ताकि हम रिपोर्ट्स आप तक पहुंचा सकें बिल्कुल कैन यू इमेजिन इफ यू आर टेकिंग मनी फ्रॉम लेट्स से मेघा इंजीनियरिंग तो हम कर पाते स्टोरी बिल्कुल नहीं बिकॉज वी बी स्केट दैट द मनी विल गो और इफ यू टेकिंग गवर्नमेंट एज फॉर एग्जाम्पल then we would be doing uh, work in their favor like you can see on news channels day in and day out so the only people that we work for is you so we need your support uh, as i wrap up i once again congratulate all of you those who have powered our work through any kind of contribution and i will once again appeal that you continue supporting us in whatever way you can so that next year we have not 6 but 8 10 15 people who won awards like the ramnath koinka so guys congratulations once again and all of viewers thank you for joining us today journalism at news laundry is powered by the public because when the public pays the public is served visit newslaundry.com/subscription and pick a payment plan of your choice pay to keep news free and independent your future and indeed the future of democracy depends on it